Hi, John. So congratulations on the film. Uh, how important was it for you to take us into this road movie that is very thrilling and super scary? Well, uh, like you said, I, I always um, love the idea of a, of a, a movie, a story that, that is constantly moving. Like you say, a road movie. I've always been very attracted to um, stories, whatever they are, that kind of are moving through space, that don't stay still, um, that, that are a, a linear journey. Um, and this one, uh, when I read Matthias Olsen's script, I, I, I loved that it was really um, a suspense thriller stripped down to its most essential elements, um, that there was, uh, it bypassed the usual uh, front-loaded exposition and kind of building the character all at the beginning so that you know, we, we can kind of uh, cultivate sympathy for these characters. I, I loved how the discovery of who this character is and, and what she's going through is something that we, that we learn about through her behavior and as we spend time with her. And even, even with uh, our, our villain character of the man, we learn about him as the story progresses. And, and again, I always love where, you know, I think every movie uh, in some ways and some of my favorite ones, there's a mystery involved about learning who this character is, that we don't need to learn everything about them up front. We can spend this whole time with them and discover really what they're made of and what they're about, what makes them tick, what their Achilles heel is. Um, I thought Matias' script did that beautifully. And again, I, I loved just focusing on the moment to moment suspense of the situations created. And uh, it was, to me, it was, a, it was a great test as a filmmaker. Also, I think it makes it even more terrifying. Uh, the fact that uh, it's not obvious, it's, it's very subtle and very elegant, the way the villain approaches the girl who is going to be the victim, but is not really the victim at the end, which is good. So it's very subtle and elegant. Was that important? Yes, uh, you know I, I appreciate that um, that that you feel that way. It uh, one thing I really liked about it is that a it's not a typical damsel in distress story. Uh, it I think any thriller or a horror movie has to tap into primal fears, and I feel like there's a very primal fear that everyone has to some degree, and I certainly every woman has, which is being alone and isolated and feeling the presence of, of what could be a dangerous, hostile man. And what I thought was very, very clever and, and, and subtle in the way it was executed on the page was that the first kind of 20, 30 minutes you are with this character and she's trying to determine if this is a threat. Uh, and then she's kind of going back and forth from feeling, am I being overly cautious? Am I being paranoid or is this really a threat? And I thought it really kind of put the, the audience through the paces of what psychologically someone feels in this situation. Uh, but I also thought that it, Matisse's script did a great job of not having a character who's making dumb decisions that are leading to her demise. In fact, she's, she's being uh, smart. She's making all the right decisions. And still, this confrontation is starting to become more and more inevitable. And she's not sort of walking into a situation blindly and foolishly. So I thought right from the get-go, uh, she was a she's a character that the audience can relate to because we're not looking down upon her. We, we relating to the intelligence that she's displaying and that her radar is up. She smells trouble and yet it's, it's unavoidable. It's going to find her. And then even when it does find her, her ways of, of crafting an escape. And then ultimately as, as, as you alluded to, I also think, the, the, the point of the movie is that the, you know, the hunted must become the hunter. 
And I think that is really what we're waiting for in the movie. And it's very thrilling the way it plays out, you know, certainly on the page. And I think we work very hard to, to capture that. Oh, it's great. And it's very, the ending is very liberating without giving anything away. It's like, woof. Yeah. After this nightmare. Oh. <laughs> yes, yes. It should be uh, cathartic, hopefully. Yeah. So tell us a little, you were saying you're working in, uh, in uh, the second season of uh, your series. Yes, uh, I did. Um, I was lucky enough to uh, do a show for um, Netflix uh, called Black Summer, um, which it, it deals in the, you know, on, 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 you know, a quick glance, it is a zombie genre. But to me, it's really uh, like alone. It's to me, it's it's a suspense thriller. And it's about it's about human beings and, and human beings. Uh, you know, season one is really about human beings, uh, you know, Americans as refugees in their own country. And it's really a story of, of behavior, of how, of how people react to, uh, to how, how people react when, all, when things are falling apart. And hopefully we are representing all different kinds of reactions. And it, again, is a, is a very, I mean, I did alone first then started doing these uh shooting season one of black summer and then season two so it really informed kind of how i thought about the show and and how much i i love the suspense genre and that you know to me suspense and is more important than action that you know that that even though prior to this i'd done a number of action things and i felt well if you if you can create suspense the action is is really just kind of the release of pressure and, and the release of tension. So building the tension is really kind of uh, the most enjoyable thing to do. And then finding releases and being surprising. So, uh, so we've been, we've been shooting up here in uh, Calgary through all weather conditions. We shot in the snow, we're shooting in the rain. It's, you know, season two is going to be a, a an epic journey. That's great. I have uh, my last question is a little more general. Do you think the fact that the well the pandemic uh, has uh, has had a tremendous impact in Hollywood, and uh, we don't go to movie theaters anymore, but we do see films on platforms. Uh, do you think uh, this has benefited independent filmmakers like you, the fact that you don't have blockbusters to compete with, and we're still wanting to see movies? They don't have to be blockbusters to to enjoy a story? Yes. Uh, well, I think that seeing movies, the question is about seeing movies in the theaters versus, yeah. versus, you know, it's an interesting question. I love the idea of seeing uh, a movie in a theater. That's, you know, was church for me growing up. But, you know, that being said, some of my favorite movies I've ever seen, I watched on home video too. I, I believe in both experiences, you know, I believe there is, we can never replace the communal experience. I remember seeing the Ridley Scott's Alien in the theater when I was nine years old, and it's one of the most formative experiences of my life. Um, by the same token, I watched, uh, you know, I, I saw uh, The Shining for the first time uh, at, on home video. And that affected me forever and, and The Godfather and Taxi Driver. So movies that I since did revisit on the big screen. I think the pandemic, of course, is, has, has scared us away from a lot of things right now. But humans are always going to have a need to congregate and be together. I believe the theatrical experience will always live on. I'm thrilled that we still have a way of getting our entertainment to people right now. Um, so I, I'm grateful for streaming platforms that to me, that's helped storytelling in general, because I think, uh, what Netflix is doing, um, especially as the leader of this is they are bringing the kind of, uh, adult dramas and bringing the diversity of stories to audiences rather than trying to put filmmakers in a box it's it's letting us tell the stories we love and finding that, that there is an audience for all kinds of movies and stories um but i look forward to sitting in a the theater again for sure <laughs>